Okay, we are uh, just ready to start our today's session. And to begin with, uh, I would like to invite Mr. Omar Ansari, an entrepreneur and researcher in advancements ICT sector. He has worked in youth employment, entrepreneurship, public policy, strategic planning, and campaigning and PR. He has formed a number of institutions, taking active part in private and social sectors. Mr. Ansari is the chairman of NECTA, the National ICT Alliance of Afghanistan, and the director of Founder Institute Kabul, and a full-time president of Technation. Please, also, answer sir. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Assalamu alaikum. First of all, I'd like to uh, thank uh, Kabul University, Mr. Rahmani, for giving us the opportunity to uh, come and speak with the uh, uh, generation of entrepreneurs in Afghanistan. And uh, I believe uh, entrepreneurship is key uh, for economic development. And uh, then incubators are key for entrepreneurship. So the topic I'll be discussing today is one of the very important programs the government of Afghanistan with the support from the World Bank started in Afghanistan and that's called Ibtikar. And you know what Ibtikar means. Uh, it's innovation, creativity, uh, and uh, doing new things. Um, I'm not teaching anything. I'm introducing a program and that's uh, Ibtikar. It's uh, an incubator. And all of you know what an incubator is. Uh, you see the machine where they put uh, some eggs in the turn to check in after they give him some heat. Uh, and uh, you might have gone to the zoo and you, uh, you might have seen the, uh, the signboards in front of the, uh, the, the, uh, the birds which are, which are there. And it says the Marhalai Tukhum Buzari or the incubation uh, period. And it says 25 days, 30 days, 15 days, it's different. Uh, for each uh, bird, right? Uh, when it comes to business incubation, it means uh, a center where uh, the new startup companies come and they learn how to do business. And that's what the incubators do. Uh, in Afghanistan, it's a new uh, uh, experience. The first one was uh, an incubator uh, funded by uh, the Department of Defense uh, uh, of the United States. Uh, and it was implemented by IBM in Herat. And the second one would be uh, Ibtikar, and there, uh, there are a couple of other private uh, business incubators. One of them is run by Tech Nation, it's called TechWorks. Um, a new initiative called Startup Afghanistan would be st uh, uh, launched uh, early 2015 that will provide support to entrepreneurs and the um, uh, the startup uh, uh, companies in Afghanistan. Um, another program which is a business accelerator that's based in the American University, and I heard the good news that Cardinal University is planning to uh, launch a business innovation program uh, at Cardinal University. So I'm going to be talking specifically about the uh, IPTICAR uh, program. Uh, it's um, as I said, an incubator by the Minister of Communications in IT. Uh, it's funded by the World Bank, implemented by my company, Technation. And the goal is to establish a standalone and financially viable um, operation uh, for the incubator by, uh, in, uh, in 24 months. The program is 24 months long, uh, uh, and the goal is to uh, graduate 20 uh, about uh, at least 20 companies uh, at the end of uh, the program. Uh, we have a space for like uh, 12 companies at the time, we can host 12 companies, uh, and the uh, incubation uh, period takes like uh, uh, six to nine months, and for some companies it's uh, 12 months because they require more time to work on their uh, products uh, and services. Um, the organizational uh, model we have here is we have established the um, uh, executive board, uh, which is, uh, mm, uh, has members from uh, 
the government as well as the private uh, in a, a sector in academia. Uh, we have members from Ministry of Communications in IT, from ISA, Ministry of Commerce in Industry, uh, some technology companies in Afghanistan, and the full-time team is uh, led by a project manager uh, with an incubator expert, who's uh, Roshan Kumar from uh, uh, Mauritius, who will be speaking later on about his experiences on international level. And there is a team of uh, mentors who are providing day-to-day uh, -day, uh, coaching as well as mentorship to the um, uh, startup companies and their founders. We have uh, 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 an administrative team as well uh, and uh, a board of advisors who advise um, uh, the car program and then um, also working with the uh, representatives from um, uh, the World Bank and Ministry of Communications in IT. Our approach and methodology included how we started with the IFTICAR program. Before we kicked off the program, we wanted to do a quick reality check to see uh, how the conditions uh, with entrepreneurship in Afghanistan are, what the needs of the entrepreneurs are, uh, in how they are doing business in the country, what the issues are, the challenges and the problem, and what the ecosystem organizations and how they uh, support entrepreneurship in Afghanistan. So that was kind of a quick feasibility study uh, of the Afghanistan entrepreneurship and did a stakeholder analysis to see uh, who the players in the market are. Uh, we developed a strategic framework and a business plan for it, the car itself uh, uh, in, uh, in incubator policies, uh, which will be very important for Kotlin as well. Uh, to, to uh, 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 develop some policies like that when uh, you uh, include like number of uh, startup companies, uh, you will have a set of uh, policies and operational guidelines as well as a service uh, delivery model. Like if you're recruiting companies into your incubator, you should know, uh, have a better uh, uh, picture of what their needs are and how you can support them. Normally, the incubators would not support them very much on technology, like in our case, we don't teach them technology. Uh, they already have the expertise uh, in the technology area, but what we teach them is uh, 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 the business, uh, how they can do business. Like technically, they're, uh, they're sound, they're savvy, but what they don't know is uh, how to market their products, how to set up their companies properly, and that's what we include in our curriculum. Uh, okay. And then we have established a global network of uh, different uh, institutions who are involved in incubators supporting entrepreneurs, startup companies uh, around the globe, and uh, we do have a, a, new, uh, a plan as well. Uh, okay, I'm going to skip a few slides because uh, it will be too much. Like in, uh, in uh, reality check and stakeholder analysis, uh, what we did was identify uh, the stakeholders involved and then document their needs and then analyze the, the stakeholder um, influence and needs and at the end manage the expectations. Um, the, institutions we have uh, talked with, uh, included in our uh, reality check, included policy maker, uh, makers, both from uh, the government and the private sector, uh, as well as partners of uh, IFICAR and possibly competitors, and then uh, clients and primary stakeholders who are the startup companies we wanted to uh, incubate at the uh, IFICAR as well as the input suppliers who are the funding uh, agencies or the banks or investors or uh, venture capitalists. Uh, we did a, strict, a strategic framework and we included, we looked into the, uh, for example, uh, the incubator strategy, incubator capabilities and the ICT industry uh, as well as the clients who are the startup companies. Our business plan included different uh, areas like uh, uh, the emission statements, products and services description of IFTICAR, and then marketing plan, competitive analysis, wall analysis, operations of uh, IFTICAR, and then 
financial planning, which includes a sustainability plan because we have got funding from the World Bank for two years. And at the end of the two years, we're looking into different models how we can sustain uh, the, the, the car operations. And uh, we're considering, for example, equity uh, revenue model, uh, as well as charging some rent uh, on the incubation program. Okay, in the uh, incubator policies and operation guidelines, uh, we worked on governments, like how the hypnotic governance should be, how the staffing should be, how the financial model uh, should be, and marketing, PR, uh, facilities management, because you will have a space uh, there which you will uh, utilize for your offices and then give it to uh, the incubators who are uh, coming uh, uh, recruited through an application process. Uh, this will require a management uh, uh, plan as well. And then the most important thing is how you select your clients. Uh, most of the incubators, you know, uh, they, mm, uh, they bring in startup companies, but at the end, when they're graduated, they're not actually uh, 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 developing, they're not successful businesses, they are not able to form uh, businesses who can uh, uh, generate revenue. So it's very important for an incubator to uh, have a really tough uh, selection criteria because not everyone is born an entrepreneur or um, uh, they want to become an entrepreneur. There are different people uh, want to do different uh, activities in their lives. Some people would like to go to government uh, uh, and some other people would like to uh, join some, uh, 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 let's say, uh, private sector company and some will work with NGOs, but not everyone will want to establish their own company and become an entrepreneur. We have some really good examples of successful entrepreneurship. Cardinal University is one of the examples. Uh, and uh, you might have heard from uh, Ruin Rahmani, there were a few people who started Cardinal, but now it has expanded into a really major enterprise in Afghanistan. So uh, it's, it's a really tough jo uh, job, and I can imagine the difficulties they might have had uh, when they were first uh, starting uh, Cardan and then developing into, uh, it into a successful enterprise. Uh, so uh, in this selection criteria, what we test is to see uh, if the applicant has the entrepreneurship DNA. If they don't have the entrepreneurship DNA, it means at some point in the future they will stop and they will discontinue uh, what they are uh, doing. Uh, and then graduation and exit, uh, and then measuring the, uh, the measuring the impact that includes uh, social and environmental. All right, so I'm going to skip this one too. Um, okay. Now coming to the point, as I said. If the car is an incubator, uh, we provide, uh, we recruit startup companies, people who want to uh, set up a new company. And they can have, uh, it's not necessary they're registered with us or Ministry of uh, Commerce and Industry. It could be like a group of uh, uh, four to five people who have a really excellent idea. Uh, or it could be one single individual who has an idea and wants to develop into a product and then a company. Um, uh, so we recruit such people and provide them with facilities, the basic facilities they need. The problem in Afghanistan is like you have $5,000, uh, $10,000 and you are interested in setting up your own company. You are going to uh, in renting a place and then buying some computers, furniture, and hiring a couple of people, and then you don't have money to uh, invest on your product. Uh, so if the car takes care of these basic needs by a startup company, we provide you uh, with facilities, office, furniture, internet, which is high speed, uh, five, uh, 10, 10, 10 MB, right? It's a 10 MB uh, at the time, and we can increase uh, that as well in the future, and that's connected to fiber. Um, and also, uh, video conferencing facilities, 
um, uh, in other meeting rooms that you can use to start companies who are coming there, uh, they can utilize it for uh, their businesses. And with that, we provide them with mentorship. People uh, who are CEOs of uh, successful companies come in, talk to them um, on a weekly and daily basis, and quoting them on how they can uh, set up their companies, work on their products uh, and services, and uh, how they can market their uh, products. Now, how do we identify these people uh, for uh, Iftikhar Incubation Program? Uh, we do uh, recruitment events. Recruitment events are a number of uh, meetings and conferences and workshops we announce, and a lot of different people who uh, are interested are applying for our program, and we uh, uh, create ideation sessions, uh, pitching boot camps, for example, and we talk about it, the car. And we see if there are people who have a really excellent, brilliant idea, we encourage them to apply for our program. Um, and then we also provide some business advisory that's free of cost. All of it in all of our programs are uh, free of cost. And then once they are successfully uh, uh, involved in our program through our uh, application process, then we take them with us for nine months. What services do we provide? I mentioned this a little bit uh, earlier. Uh, but I'm going to explain it more here. The first one is uh, secretariat support. Uh, you have an office, for example, you need a secretary to re uh, respond to telephone calls or the emails and uh, different other activities. So at the car, you would indeed need a sec secretary. Uh, we have a telephone. Uh, um, uh, we can have a telephone operator where we receive the calls and also if there are people coming in, walking into the office, they will have to register and properly receive and then guided to the meeting room. So this includes and other support services like printing, photocopy, and um, Then infrastructure and facility-based services, I mentioned this, we give them uh, with internet, furniture, office rooms, and other uh, facilities. Uh, then business services where we work with them on a daily basis. For example, they're working on their uh, business plan, uh, they need some guidance. Uh, we have uh, experts there, we have other mentors, and they can consult with them on how they can uh, 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 get their feedback uh, in order to refine and improve their um, uh, business plans. And then finance, financial services, we, which we normally do after the uh, graduation, um, that includes uh, uh, connecting our graduates, the incubators, with financial uh, uh, sources as well as market. Uh, and um, uh, because you know, when when you're uh, uh, done setting up your company, you, you would require more for more funding to uh, work on your products and launch products and expand your business to some uh, additional marketing, that's where uh, we provide support uh, uh, to, to our graduates. Uh, for example, uh, the Ministry of uh, Communications in IT has a, uh, a fund called Telecom Development Fund, which has like a thousand million, um, a hundred million uh, dollars. Um, and uh, this is for uh, telecom development not only the telecom sector, but the services that could be provided over the uh, hard layer that, that have been established by the telecom. That includes like services that <coughs> companies can uh, create. And then market access. We connect our graduates or in incubators with the market so they can get uh, more uh, customers, sell their products and services. Uh, education and access to knowledge, that includes mentorship, education sessions, and stuff. And then brand building, we promote their brands through different uh, meetings, events, conferences, uh, and activities. And then one other service, sometimes it happens that the incubator is so much busy serving its clients who are the incubators that it forgets about itself. So we have included this in our service. So uh, when we're serving others, we should serve the incubator itself. 
uh, that's uh, very important uh, for the survival. So, in short, it's business support. We provide uh, market access events, publicity, uh, and funding. Uh, our global network includes uh, 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 Founder Institute, Microsoft, uh, linked to uh, the World IT, the, which is the National ICT Alliance of Alliance, and with the uh, World uh, IT and Services Alliance, Open Source of Afghanistan, uh, Tech Women of Afghanistan, and uh, MIT's uh, Accelerator. These are the institutions we have been talking with, but it's expansive, expanding. These are a few uh, examples uh, of the institutions who are supporting the entrepreneurship on a global level. And we're talking to them, like Microsoft BizPark is one of the good examples. Uh, and Google also have some entrepreneurship support programs, and we would like to link uh, our program with uh, their offerings. Uh, who are incubated at Iptikar now? Uh, one of the companies called WeSoft, and they're working on a hospital management system. Uh, they, have, uh, they have the product ready. It's uh, been uh, uh, tested in one of the hospitals in Afghanistan. They're working on uh, 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 doing some more research and enhancing their product so they can expand to other uh, regions in Afghanistan. Codezone is a company and one of their products is uh, in an education management uh, system which is called eMarta. Uh, it's a, a school management system and, and uh, it provides different uh, modules like how do you take attendance of the students, the teachers, and all different uh, people engaged in your uh, school. Uh, the other company is uh, called, uh, uh, they actually rebranded, I, I just heard today in our session, it's called Game, uh, what was it, Game Republic? Afghanistan? Yeah, they rebranded as Game Republic Afghanistan, their, their company, and they're working on online gaming. And the first game they were saying will create is about the Afghanistan Russian war. And it will be like a 3D game uh, uh, being played online. Um, another company uh, which does a really uh, uh, interesting product is called Afghanistan Robotics. They're creating a, a smart tank. A tank that could go and deactivate uh, uh, bombs. Uh, at the beginning, and uh, they would like to do further research so they can install an automatic weapon on the top of the tank, and also uh, um, a camera that can collect information and send it back to the servers. Uh, Tasir uh, was a content and digital media company. Unfortunately, they. Uh, they had to drop because they were really busy and couldn't do it full time at the Epticar. Uh, we're recruiting seven more companies, and the interviews we've taken one of them is a mobile uh, based HR system, management system. Second one is uh, we'll be working on inventory management system. The third one is working on uh, a university management system. Uh, fourth one is uh, working on uh, a portal for hotels and wedding halls. They say it's really difficult for Afghans when they are getting married. You know, they have to go to many different uh, wedding halls and find out about the food and uh, the prices and different stuff. So he's going to be giving them with a uh, with a facility so they can uh, sit at home with their family and see different options that they might have. They could see the pictures and videos of the call and the prices and possibly talk and do both online talking. And the brand name they have chosen for this would be Hotel Gap, for, uh, I guess. Um, the other one is for, uh, working on financial management system and the last one would be working on uh, uh, mobile apps. There are a few other applications we have in screen now uh, uh, by the next uh, three or four days we uh, might uh, complete the process. But if you're interested, you still have a chance until Saturday. All of the deadlines that's uh, passed, if uh, you are interested to apply, and go to our website, it's <coughs> the car, uh, dot mcit.gov.tf. 
these are some photos of the inauguration ceremony. We had a couple of weeks back, Minister of Communications in IT and Deputy Minister of Mohammad John. Uh, this is where during the ribbon cutting <coughs> in this media, and this is the press conference we had. This is one of the companies uh, giving a briefing to our Minister uh, of Communication. This is Afghanistan Robotics uh, Company, and this is the, uh, uh, the game uh, report. <laughs> That's it. If you would like to, uh, if you had questions, uh, you can get in touch with me, and I'm gonna. Okay. This is my. This is my email. Thank you very much. Because even those programs I've been running around the world, they have to pay me more fee. I think this is an opportune time. It's a two-year program. You should take advantage of this. My, I talk about the uh, 
incubation program in general. And Samis have mentioned about the incubation. Let's first get the definition right. Sometimes these concepts are used interchangeably. So incubator when you're providing, you're talking about the process itself. They need not the process, the apparatus. If you look at the dictionary, this is what you find. Providing wealth for hatching eggs, rearing premature babies, or developing bacteria. But here we're talking about business incubator. How we are providing a conducive environment for the business to grow. What are the support in terms of mentoring, coaching, facilities you provide, so you can focus on the core activities or the core competencies that you have. So you don't need to worry about who's paying the rent, who's paying for the electricity, who's paying for the internet. You just need to focus on your business identity for that. And uh, when you look at the concept itself, the, why the, the name came in? Well, actually it's a coincidence because the first person who set up the incubator program was based in the Batava industrial center in Lugo. And incidentally, the first that was involved in rearing chicken. So that's why the concept, they kept the concept. But nowadays, you have a lot of these nomenclatures, like uh, different terms they use, science and technology sports, where all are nurturing business ideas and technology and research and programs. So they want businesses out of these programs to come out successfully. Okay, this is uh, a little bit a little history about the business incubation. It started in the 70s through the managed workshop enterprise agencies program, industrial states. If you go down, then the science part came eventually. Then you have the multi-purpose incubators where you have different kind of uh, activities going on, specialized incubators. After 2000, actually, the ICT incubators really took off because the price of internet connectivity went down, infrastructure support came for. So now business ideas started really uh, growing up. And this is where the new economy incubators, you have uh, incubator with our and virtual incubators. Very often when we did a reality check, I think it was all a little bit the same one, the one I did around the world. For ICT sector, incubator matters a lot in terms of the business support that you require. It's not necessarily in terms of the infrastructure that we provide. Mercy. People come with business ideas, they can connect with internet connectivity from home or from anywhere else, but what the value most is the business development services that you're offering in terms of mentoring, coaching, uh, marketing, business plan development, networking, this is more important. How do you connect with people? This is something very interesting. So this is what I talk about, the incubation is the process itself, incubator is the facility. So you need to get this right. Uh, when you talk about business incubators, it's a combination of all. It's business, it's a building, support services, network of contacts, manager staff, people who are helping you to, to develop your companies and startup companies. Very often people tend to say, okay, we have a very beautiful facility, this is an incubator program, this is our Actually, we need to work with people and grow companies. How do we grow businesses? This is where the final addition for business incubation program comes. I've seen some of the business incubation programs fail because they focus too much on the infrastructure. But they were not developing the business development services, not, not much in terms of the program. They didn't have the right mentors, the right networking facilities, the right support, even the right training. Even the training you're providing was inappropriate. So this is something where you need to be careful. Like as experts, like uh, incubator management, you need to focus on programs that are demand driven. What do you require? So this is on a day-to-day -day basis that we need to work with. Uh, a little bit some of the international studies that was done some time back, like, uh, even now, this is uh, real. 90% of all startups that have been within incubator program are still active three years after. So it means they are still sustainable and growing. And because of the support program, they, they, they got through the business incubation program. Nowadays, as per the estimate, there are around 7,000 uh, incubators around the world. And in Europe, when they did the study, the, the cost of creating jobs in incubator was the least cost. 4,000 euros per job compared to other economic development programs. So this tells policymakers also they could focus their efforts. It's all incubators in itself are different and distinct based on the reality, on the ground reality or in the region. Because each country is different from each other. And the program needs the homegrown problems and the homegrown solution. This is where the business incubation program can help solve these uh, issues. A little bit about the uh, Network of incubators, the, the biggest uh, network of incubators still now, so far, I've encountered that is the InfoDev global network. Till now, they have network around 93 countries, uh, 240 incubators that are there, 20,000 enterprises which have been created, and almost 10 times the same amount of jobs. 
And what they've done is given each country is different in each other, and they have small staffing. What they did, they created a regional network. Asia Pacific Incubator Network, where Afghanistan is part of it now. They have East, uh, Eastern Europe and Central Asia, Middle East, North Africa, Caribbean Business Incubator Association, Latin America, African Incubator Network. So all these countries are linked, actually. They have regular networking and training programs where you can network and share ideas. They have virtual platform. And now they're focusing more on mobile development applications where they could solve local problems. And a lot of these, if you go on the InfoDev website, you'll have a lot of these case studies. How they're helping these entrepreneurs to grow in rural areas where people who have a business idea, they're helping them with small amount of funding to grow these businesses. Why we need incubation? Sometimes we can say, there are a lot of big, big passionate people and uh, uh, entrepreneurs, potential people who want to grow businesses, but they have a lot of these hurdles. They don't have the right capital, right kind of support, and this is where government intervention, public intervention is required. Here the World Bank has come. And that's why it explained there's a small number of private incubators, 7 to 15 percent. These are mostly venture capitalists, those who are looking for, like Google, uh, they have Parasonic, if you take some of the case studies, they are incorporating, they are calling people with business ideas to come in and invest. So they give you the support, if the business idea works, they buy you in. So that's why you have a small number of corporate incubators. New businesses are too risky, that's why people don't want to invest. So who's going to help them? So business incubation can be part of the solution. New businesses can't afford professional uh, business support and services. This is something important because this is a stage which is critical for you to develop. You need more support at the initial stage. And this is where capital sh is uh, short for. You don't have much in terms of resources at that time. So this is where the incubator program will provide in-kind support. Where they have the business support, the mentors will be there, uh, the trainers will be there, the incubator management will be here, there to help you on a daily basis. Early stage financing is limited in most uh, countries. Here, if you look at the financing from the banks, the, I think last year, World Bank did a study. On the 6 to 8 percent of the bank loan is provided to small and medium enterprises. So there's a big gap. So the rest is provided to big enterprises. So who is supporting these entrepreneurs? I read somewhere like the easiest way to finance your company is to have a paying customer. Because a lot of businesses fail, not because the product is wrong, because of mismanagement of funds. If you have a paying customer, obviously you'll get the funds keep coming, the profit will be there, so you can reinvest, okay? <coughs> Entrepreneurs and small businesses, this is really difficult. When you start a business, so incubators will help to reduce the risk of starting businesses. You can focus on your core competencies and the, uh, uh, the program or the product you're developing, so you don't have to bother about the other uh, problems that are involved. You have support and resources which you have access to once you open the incubator. So I would encourage every one of you who has a business idea want to join this program, this is the right time. So we'll have like, uh, the website is there, so you have the form, you can fill it up. So we'll do a screening and an interview, and eventually if you're coming, if you, uh, you're successful, you can join the program. And this is a free program, you don't have to pay anything as such, okay? Once, th this program when you saw the, the what Ansari Sam was showing, you saw the pictures, all these startups got free visibility. They got free publicity. This is something you need to capitalize on because getting visibility in the market is difficult and you have to spend on marketing. So this is something that a plus one incubator can provide, visibility. Regional coverage and empowerment. If you become successful with an incubator program, you can become a role model in the community itself. Even in Mauritius, I'll show you a little bit some of the slides. We had some companies who made it successful and they become inspiration to the new generation, to the university people. So every time when we went to do a presentation, they had a 10 minute slot to show how they started, what are the hurdles they, they, they went through, what's the product they developed, and where they are now, and where they want to be. So that could help you also, you know, to, to, to get that passion within you to say, okay, if you did it, why can't I? So this is something we are looking at. Obviously, at community level, that will be creating jobs. There will be a lot of spillover effects. If you're developing a program or uh, like a product, it's specific, uh, like uh, virtual, sometimes you need to print something. So there will be spillover effects. You need to outsource a lot of work. So this is a, you will create jobs. And if you're saying you're going to partner with university, 
there'll be a lot of collaborative efforts. How are we going to collaborate in terms of research and development program? We have a lot of these projects that you're developing. Sometimes we can see the commercial aspect out of it. How are you going to develop this program into making a business? So this is something that we could do that when we, when we do that. Once you're in the incubator program, you have access to mentors, people who are in the business sector, so you have access to the good practices. How people do businesses, what are the business etiquettes? So these are things that you're going to learn, which you wouldn't have access to if you are not within the program. So this, I think, you should take advantage of. Uh, this incubator I was managing uh, in Mauritius like, uh, for like four years when I got my international uh, assignment. So it was set up in 2003. We incubated around 27 enterprises. That doesn't mean all enterprises have to be successful. Some say will drop midway, some fail, some make it very big. I had one company who had only five employees. After six months, we got a big contract from, the, from France as outsourcing. So all the web development was done locally. So we had to relocate in a building that we 50 people. Just to tell you, like, there are a lot of opportunities of networking and collaboration. It doesn't mean you have to work on your own. Networking can bring value to your projects. So you can develop your products, make, uh, you have partnership agreements, so you can have network, networking with international partners, so it doesn't mean you have to focus on the local market. You could do how you could outsource some of the expertise you have abroad. So if that's something you, look, you can look at. The investment was small. We like rented the building, right? Uh, invested in construction. So the investment was around 600,000 uh, US dollars at that time. We had 11 startups that graduated. So the surface, it was a small building. Each office is the same as we have in, uh, each office is the same size that we have in, uh, 20 square meters each. And if you see the access, we had infrastructure, we have access to internet connectivity, logistics, business support programs, advisory training, same. But if you see the, they had like, here, they had to pay on a monthly basis. But here it's zero. I think if you have, if you believe you have an idea that will solve a local problem, or solve, you create a product or services, or demand for a product locally, I think it's the right time for you guys to, to come with here. We are also encouraging women to participate because one of the conditions of the contract is to encourage women entrepreneurs to join in this program. So I would encourage you ladies to join this program. Successful startup from at international level. Those who, who uses Dropbox? Everybody, I, I believe, is using Dropbox. So these are outcomes of incubator programs. ScreenFD, Airbnb, Reddit, all these got support from incubation programs. If they got it, why can't you? This is the question too. We did a, uh, a reality check together with Azari Saab, so we tried to see where are the entrepreneurs in Afghanistan. So we categorize this in four groups. One is the family business, those who, who their parents are already in business, they want to continue or grow the business. And those who are new, they have identified an opportunity and they want to pursue the objective. And there are those who say, I don't have a job, I don't know what to do, I want to start a business. And there are those who say, I want to start it big. The growth of the world. They are looking for that opportunity. We are looking for these two. Opportunity, growth, and also the family. Obviously, they need to show the value addition. If you fall in these three categories, you are welcome to join this program. I have a small video I want to show you, just to give you a flavor of what incubation look like from World Bank perspective. So that will show you a little bit how business practice on incubation is developing. Each incubator in each country is different. So you can't say Afghanistan incubator is similar to what you have in Saudi Arabia. It's totally wrong. Because the context, the entrepreneur, the homegrown problems, and the homegrown solutions are different. So these are things you need to consider. So what I'll do is, uh, I'll just put on this video so you, you could uh, watch it for 10 minutes, actually it's longer. If you have time, like, you could show it after. Or you have set portions on a Facebook group so they can access it later yeah. on. Yeah. So do you want me to play it in like five minutes? They could see it or? Just skip it through, uh, it's fine, otherwise we can. Okay, so later you could have a quick look. So that will be, maybe at a later stage you could show them. So we could continue the presentation. Yes. So thank you very much for your attention. If you have a question and answer, we'll take it after this presentation. Thank you. <laughs>
a lot of good words coming from Abdekar. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Kumar, on your insightful uh, thoughts on incubation. Uh, it is a perfect scenario right there. Uh, we tried, uh, let me be very honest, we tried to start up an incubation center within the university in Karla, but uh, it, it, it costs a lot of uh, funds to make sure that we have the right resources and the right expertise to help the uh, new entrepreneurs uh, establish successful businesses. So right now with uh, uh, funding from the MCIT and then as uh, Mr. Kumar mentioned, the, uh, Mr. Ansari mentioned, there's a hundred dollar million fund in TDF and Telecom Development Fund available right there in the Ministry of Telecommunication for such projects. So uh, people like you uh, who would like to establish innovative uh, uh, businesses in uh, any sector who, which would actually try to solve an issue within the context of Afghanistan, uh, they have no limitations in funding and there are lots of opportunities available. Now I would like to uh, invite uh, Ms. Ivana, who, who has been raised and educated in four continents, has been an entrepreneur with two successful ventures, specializing in mobile tech and products for emerging markets, specifically in Africa, Middle East, and AFPOC. Her newest endeavor is an investor-backed 3D reconstruction and measurement company named Proj X. She has also successfully founded three non-profits and has worked as a consultant to donor agencies founded to projects in ICT4D and innovation models, including an advisory seat of United Nations Women. She is currently based in Amman, Jordan, but uh, we will uh, try to find her on Twitter or LinkedIn and then share her Twitter and LinkedIn addresses on our Facebook group for future discussions. And also I would like to invite Mr. Majid Karar. Uh, who is an Afghan born and based writer, blogger, and communications specialist. He has worked as a spokesperson and communications advisor to the Minister of Agriculture from 2008 to 2014, and he has completed his postgraduate studies from the International University of Istanbul. Currently, he is a member of the co founder team of the Startup Advancement. They would like to share their opinion about the Startup Advancement. So, please, Mr. Karar and Ms. Ku. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yes. Okay, great. So uh, our presentation, I will take care of the first part of the presentation, and uh, my colleague will take care of the second part of the presentation. Um, and in my first part of the presentation, let's split into two. So first is I want to talk a little bit about my own entrepreneurial journey and see you know, if you can relate to it, and then we will talk about startup Afghanistan. So um, I am American by nationality. My parents are Chinese Mongolian, naturalized citizens, and I grew up in the US, China, Italy, and France. And I uh, lived two years in Kenya, worked a lot in Kenya and Tunisia, and now I'm living in Jordan. So basically, I'm a global nomad, and I live out of a suitcase, right? But, um, I want to talk to you a little bit about what it means to sort of be an entrepreneur, and I'm sure you know this because you're in this room, which means that you know what entrepreneurship is, and you, you're most likely an entrepreneur yourself. Okay. So if you think about all the presentations that have been given so far, it's about helping entrepreneurs, but behind that, a lot of it is being a, start, being a startup itself. Um, this week, I worked from the Tech Nation office, and you can see the, the amount of work and the, and the amount of frustration, the amount of happiness that go into making something like it to car work. Um, and, you know, and, and even for Roshan, who works under the World Bank, everything, you know, he, he's, an, he's an entrepreneur because he has to start everything, he has to make the plan for it, he has to deal with a lot of politics and a lot of that stuff. Except probably he doesn't have to deal with the funding as much as we do as entrepreneurs. Um, but, so I mean, I just want you to keep in mind that when we're giving out these pre presentations like Iptikar, um, for InfoDev, and even for Startup Afghanistan, we're a startup ourselves. And so we go through the exact same pain, we go through the exact same happiness, you know, as you do. Um, and so, by show of hands, how many of you here 
has a business idea? Just raise your hands. Okay, every one of you should have your hands raised because you're in this program, right? All right, um, how many of you already have a business? Okay. How many of you have a business outside of Afghanistan, India, and Pakistan? A couple. Okay, wait, where's your business? Great, and then there's a, there was another hand back there. <laughs> yes, I'm actually making you talk. <laughs> So just say where your business is located or where your business is functioning. What? Pakistan. Okay. Okay, great. All right. Hey, at least you guys are listening now. Uh, okay, great. So basically, the, the idea of Startup Afghanistan started um, because a bunch of us entrepreneurs, ourselves here, were sort of frustrated, right, by how decentralized, especially the access to funding and then access to products and great mentors, all those things are lacking here. You have, on one side of the spectrum, you have donor agencies like the World Bank, USAID, GIZ, that are giving out essentially free money for people who have ideas, right? And then, you know, they go through the program for two to three years, they have the funding, but because they have the funding, psychologically, they're not trained to think, okay, I need to make revenue, and I need to make my company sustainable, right? How do we do that? And that's not really something that is, you know, taught everywhere, and I think, you know, you're in a unique position because you're here, which means that you are taught those skills, right? But at the same time, how do you access funding? like real funding and not just grant money and free money. So we want to actually make that distinction. So how can we help Afghan entrepreneurs and interested entrepreneurs actually generate revenue in the quickest way? How can we market their product outside, not only inside the country, but outside the country? And so this really became a grassroots movement where we wanted to unify all of the major players in the ecosystem and say, okay, and then and for the entrepreneurs who come to us and say, you know what, we need help with X, Y, and Z, can you get it done? And then we can just go to you know the players and even ourselves and say, okay, if you need support with agriculture, we'll connect you to the Ministry of Agriculture and we'll connect you to all these suppliers in the region that you want to work in. So you're not only you know, serving the domestic market here, but you're also serving the international market outside of Central Asia, outside of Pakistan. Um, and we have the expertise and the experience in the network to do that. Um, so what we are is, sorry. Okay, so what we are is we're a multi-stakeholder entrepreneurship and startup support system. It got launching successfully, you know, 1,000 startup companies by 2020. And that's a very ambitious goal, but I think the great thing, and I've lived in many countries, I've worked in even more, I've traveled in, I think now up to, to 60 some countries. But what really astonishes me about Afghanistan, um, and I've spent a lot of time mainly in Kabul and Kandahar, is the fact that people here have a lot of that entrepreneurial DNA that you know we were talking about earlier. And so we do think that yes, it's ambitious for us to think we're going to launch 1,000 companies, but it's definitely possible. Um, and by starting these companies and by really dispersing this entrepreneurial culture and making it not only just something that you do to make money, but making this mainstream and making it uh, much more you know, accepted in some parts of the country. Um, and you know, we're doing all of that to really try to foster the private sector, which is pretty nascent at this point. So the process, we're organized in three um, phases. The first is ideation. So a lot of you have ideas, but where do you go from, from, from there, right? You need to do market research. You need to be connected to uh, people to make sure that your idea is within the government regulations and, um, and all that stuff needs to be done. So that's what we really want to do is, for the ideation is, um, you know, we want to invest in the people, the entrepreneurs, your, um, you, and your ideas. And then, so this will be done in Kabul, but we will also be in many other cities 
around Afghanistan to make this an Afghanistan effort, not just a very cobble center idea. And then the second phase is the incubation. So for incubation, you know, we're looking for companies that's less than one year old, that's making less than 50,000 US dollars in revenue. And when I talk about revenue, I'm talking about money you're generating from clients and does not include any donor money that you're getting on the side. Because right? we actually want to make sure that your revenue model is sustainable. And then once they go for the six month period, um, we have the acceleration. So you can join at the different phases as well. So for the acceleration, this is where we're really trying to help companies grow. And we're looking for companies that have around $2,500,000 in revenue and um, less than five years of experience. Great. Um, a little bit more about the ideation phase. So the registration process is going to be online, it's going to be offline. Um, and we are trying to do it through workshops and we're really trying to see this as we want to get as many people interested in starting their own companies as possible. And so as I said before, we're going to be in different cities around the country um, and we're going to do this also through partnerships because as I said before, we don't want to become another you know, incubator or something that's doing it on their own. We want to make sure that we're engaging with existing players and that, we'll, that we're existing with future players as well. Um, the application process, uh, we, you know, we look really at the people um, themselves, so your capabilities, experiences, as well as your profile, which is a, just a really nice word for a personality. Um, we want to make sure that you know, you're committed, you're a team player, um, you're collaborative, etc. Uh, we're also going to be evaluating your idea, and if you're joining us at the ideation phase, the product doesn't matter, but if you're joining us at the acceleration and of course uh, um, the incubation phase, we do want to make sure that the product is, is user friendly, there's a demand for it, and people will pay for it. Second phase is incubation. Um, so this is, so we're actually collaborating with all of these players that have actually talked before you, um, among others, to provide the infrastructure, the seed capital, mentorship, and marketing and branding. And we don't want to reinvent the wheel, right? We don't want to do something that someone else is already really good at. So if the car is really good at mentorship, then we'll say, okay, we will partner with them and some you know, programs will be held at the if car office and vice versa. Finally, um, for the acceleration phase, and so this is a growth phase. Um, typically, in VC speak, this is around Series B or C or D, um, and um, we are and we're definitely going to help with the funding to private or access to private funding. So whether that's coming from a VC who's really interested um, from internationally and they're really interested in Afghanistan, believe me, they do really exist. Um, me being one of them, um, you know, we can connect you to the me, us, I, yeah. Um, at the same time, you know, there are a lot of Afghans themselves who have made a lot of money from real estate, and we are also doing a lot of work in trying to train them on saying that you should invest in startup companies. And when I say startup, um, for Startup Afghanistan, we're not just tech. We also accept non-tech. And then the idea is that, you know, if, so imagine this space, you have someone who's doing agriculture, Company and they and they are going internationally. They need a website, right? So instead of trying to search for a website designer, they can just turn around and go, "Hey, you're doing a website design company. Can you please help us? You know, design company. That's mutually beneficial." And so that's a kind of collaborative workspace that we're trying to foster. Um, and then networking and market access. Um, I think those are pretty obvious. And I will turn it over to. Thank you very much. Uh, Salam alaikum. Uh, the, the slide that I'm talking about is uh, the, the very sensitive question that everyone is asking it when we propose the idea. It's about uh, what uh, differences do we have with the different programs that have been implemented and were either half successful or uh, failure. And this is a very important question, and this is one of the differences that we have, that we are based on, basically on uh, the lessons learned. 
both from the programs that have been implemented in Afghanistan so far during the 13 years, uh, and also the successful models that we have outside Afghanistan. There are global models that are uh, quite similar to the models that we are uh, localizing in Afghanistan. Uh, so one of the things that makes us diff different from others is that we are based on the, those uh, lessons learned, which are very important. One of these uh, lessons that we have all know about is that uh, similar programs in the past have been focusing not on all puzzles of the picture. They were focusing on only one part of the business. For example, they either uh, pay grants uh, as credit, but then they don't uh, go after the business plan. Or they uh, uh, don't see the idea whether it's practical, or ultimately sustainable or not. Uh, but we are different because we are linking all the, the puzzles of the picture. We are uh, uh, chasing the idea and then going to the incubation phase and, phase and then uh, to the acceleration phase, where we also support the, the entrepreneurs with uh, good marketing plans, for example, which is very important, uh, with ideas that can help them uh, expand uh, their business. Uh, with the funding uh, or identifying, uh, introducing them to the uh, funding sources, or if we can uh, provide more funds uh, to help them expand their businesses. Uh, we are also, uh, besides this, uh, the, the idea is uh, that we ourselves are entrepreneurs. We are the same people. In the past, uh, uh, the initiatives that worked with the private sector uh, mostly uh, chas the, the AGO model. They were not entrepreneurs themselves, so uh, they didn't understand the, the private sector as we would understand it. Uh, of course, when I say we, we are not you know the, the team that is managing the idea. Um, uh, the, the beneficiaries are equally part of this team. The, the, the ones who are interacting with the idea of startup, especially. Uh, the new graduates of the universities, uh, 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 they are the hope for, for this program. Uh, looking to the sensitivity of the, the time also, because the, the free money in Afghanistan has stopped and we all are looking for uh, such opportunities that uh, uh, can change Afghanistan into an uh, exporting nation, which is the agenda of the new government also. Um, Inclusiveness is one of our, and, and one of the things that uh, makes us different. Uh, as you know, uh, uh, most of the, the youth of the new generation they are familiar with technology. Uh, now we are, uh, you know, uh, up to a limit. We are ready to go to e businesses, e education, e agriculture, e health, uh, for example. Uh, this advantage uh, well, could not be used in the past because there was not the capacity that we see it here in front of us uh, nowadays. So uh, in terms of time, we are much more prepared for that. And in terms of the team that is behind this uh, idea, we also uh, support the use of technology and uh, we can utilize it. Uh, besides that, openness of the uh, team for partnering with different organizations from the uh, uh, inside of Afghanistan, government organizations, non-government organizations, donors. Uh, this is basically a platform that that uh, is called a multi-stakeholder platform. Uh, that is another thing that makes us different. Uh, why this is the the, the the core objective of our presentation is to encourage you and to encourage all to participate in this uh, shared idea uh, to just join us. Uh, the, the main reason uh, for joining us is that, as I explained, uh, we have uh, the, the donor funds are going to stop, the PRTs are going to go, and there is a lot of money in the market that are flooding Afghanistan. And we are the people who should stop it and should, uh, who should use it for the uh, betterment of the future of Afghanistan. I uh, will uh, indulge into a sent sent uh, sentimental uh, 
side of the, the, the issue, which is very important for us as Afghans. Uh, uh, we uh, will support any idea, uh, whether it's an IT idea, a technological uh, idea, or business, or it's about the energy, the renewable energy, or about agriculture. Uh, we are open for, for all these ideas. Uh, the ideation phase is for individuals as well as for the companies, for the uh, new businesses. Uh, but in the incubation phase, uh, we can also have the, the businesses that has uh, a limit of uh, experience, the businesses that uh, develop, already develop, or has uh, revenue. The, the peak for that is $15,000. Uh, in the acceleration phase, we can have even more uh, strong businesses. In my experience uh, in Afghanistan says that there are businesses uh, of, of a big size, like for example, six million dollars investment. But but the owners of these businesses uh, lack uh, the basic uh, uh, knowledge about about uh, new practices. For example, they don't know about the importance of the, uh, for example, uh, advertisement. Uh, I was one of the uh, these investors in Jalalabad who had a big poultry farm. He had invested uh, more than six million dollars. But he had not met the Minister of Agriculture uh, because he was not aware of the importance of having this, uh, the support of government uh, in that level. Uh, and actually I encouraged him to come to the Ministry of Agriculture, meet the Minister, and he met him and he ultimately got some uh, uh, credit. So uh, that's the, the practice. Yeah. Even the big, the big companies in Afghanistan, they lack this support and we uh, need to provide them the support that is uh, important uh, for their uh, sustainability. Uh, you can join us as startup or as uh, new entrepreneurs. You can also join us as, as mentors, especially the intellectuals and uh, especially the people, the grad graduates of the universities, if they want to utilize their skills. Uh, for learning more, uh, learning through, through uh, teaching brothers, uh, and learning through practicing, which is very important because in universities you are uh, learning inside the classes, you are not doing the practical uh, work. But then there has to be uh, uh, an opportunity where you can practice uh, things. So, uh, beside that, uh, you partners uh, from uh, different organizations. We are open for the uh, partnership in uh, different areas. Uh, for example, uh, as our business is expanding, expanding in Afghanistan, we'll be needing more and more infrastructural, uh, for example, space uh, for offices. And uh, also, we need uh, partners uh, in ICT area. We, we need part partners in the uh, communication and marketing areas. We need uh, partners who can share with us uh, uh, the, their intellectual resources plus their human resources. Uh, for example, uh, uh, mentors might be needed uh, for, uh, uh, especially in the ideation phase of our program. Uh, and that's all. Uh, I once again urge you all to interact with the idea uh, because the idea is the, the main uh, hope behind the idea is that uh, uh, we can uh, uh, utilize the, the capacity that has been created during the 11, uh, 12 uh, years in Afghanistan, and we uh, need to uh, utilize the, the um, resources, financial resources that uh, Afghanistan currently have. Uh, that's all. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much, Ms. Hu and uh, Mr. Karar. Uh, 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 such a nice presentation on Afghanistan and Saudi. Right there, we have got pretty much all the tools available for us in front of us that we do have that idea, that winning idea, that real opportunity that can solve so many issues in Afghanistan. They are the right people who can help us in establishing our businesses. Uh, I'm sure there might be uh, questions. I will definitely share their contact information on their Facebook, uh, Twitter, LinkedIn, IDs with the Skype and telephone numbers as well, if permitted. 
uh, with you so you can uh, keep the discussions going. Uh, right now we'll take uh, uh, questions and answers for 10 minutes and then we'll go uh, from starting a business which has been discussed by the FTFR and the Startup Advancement team to how we can acquire a new business. Uh, a very uh, a practical example of how AIB Bank has acquired, acquired uh, Standard Chartered Bank in Afghanistan, which should be uh, done uh, by Mr. Uh, uh, at this point, uh, 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 my commission, but uh, 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 first questions, let me see the hands, uh, right, first, second, third, fourth. Uh, uh, please uh, mention uh, to, who, to whom the question is uh, related. And uh, I'll take I'll take three questions first, and then we'll uh, provide an opportunity for the answers. Uh, the name of Michael, the most kind and merciful. Uh, first of all, I welcome the guest over here, and it is uh, honorable. Uh, my question referred to uh, Mr. Roshan. Uh, as an expert that you are in terms of, in the uh, side of uh, entrepreneur, so in the country like Afghanistan, where there is unstable economy for the entrepreneur, that uh, they want to build uh, or start their business over here, so which is a big, big risk over here in Afghanistan, how you are going to get the advice to handle the risk? Thank you very much. Thank you very much. I'll take the second question, uh, the third question, and then we'll go to the answers. Uh, second question, right. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Masood Zazim. Thank you very much from uh, Mr. Uh, Ansari Saab. I want to uh, ask a question about the core competency of FDCAR. If you put some light on core competency of FDCAR. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. And the third. Uh, I would like to ask Mr. Roshan. Uh, does Aptikar support this production sector trading and trading as a business or just its link with the ICT? And uh, the part of second question, uh, we have as a part of course material, we have uh, an assignment of establishing business. So I would like to ask that do Aptikar help us if we do our uh, assignment and come to Aptikar to support us. We are working this uh, as a group. We have a group of nine people working on the project and we want to establish the business uh, practically. The third one, in case someone has multiple ideas and you want your consultancy, which one has the good feasibility in case of Afghanistan? So, would like your suggestion. Thank you. Thank you very much. So, uh, the third question was, I think, was not very clear. So we'll go to the speakers. Uh, Mr. Roshan first on the first question, and then second on to answer his and then back to Roshan Thank you. <clears throat> this question I get most, most of the time. The first day I was in Afghanistan, the first question was about the security issue. Uh, now I'm in a position to answer this uh, question. Uh, we did a reality check and stakeholder analysis. Security is one of the issues. There are more pressing issues for an entrepreneur. When we did the survey, we had around 38 questionnaires, 38 people, potential entrepreneurs. When I got the, did the analysis, the first issue was lack of finance. And security was ranked fifth in the, in, in the, when we did the analysis. Security was fifth priority. They had more in terms of the business support that they needed, the finance, business development services, developing the business idea. Because very often we have people coming in, they have a business idea, but they don't know what next step. How they're going to do about it. This is where incubation and pre-incubation helps. I think the security issue is a concern, but there are more pressing concerns for an entrepreneur because the entrepreneur, when I, when I showed the presentation, I had like opportunity entrepreneur, growth entrepreneur, and those with the family entrepreneurs. But I would like to say, these passionate entrepreneurs, they know where they're going. And security is one, but there are more pressing issues. So I think if you want, if you are sure about your business idea and you're persuaded, 
this idea is going to work. I, I don't think security should be a concern at this point, and especially for ICT, because this could be a virtual business also. Does it need to be physically based in an office? You could work from anywhere. So this is one. The second one was about the uh, the group. I think uh, they mentioned about the group working. Obviously, we're getting groups from various uh, institutions coming. So we will help you eventually to fill up the form to discuss your business idea. We have three stages where we will have the like the uh, sensitization session where we call all of you guys who are interested for a presentation in detail how to fill up the form and what are the issues. And once you start developing your business idea, we will we are here. There's a team actually at the Iptika. I'm here, and Sari Slav is here, and Ajmal was here some time ago. And we have a team dedicated on a day-to-day -day basis. So you can call us at any time, you'll be welcome. So we'll be helping you. So in developing your idea. So we'll share, I mean, uh, you'll get all our contact details and the website, so anytime you can drop in. Just give us a call, you're free to join. One final thing on that question, uh, is it only for the ICT sector or? Yes, uh, the, if you look at the office space, it can accommodate up to four, even five people. So if you're planning to do training, this is not appropriate. We are talking of ICT and ICT enabled services. Because ICT in itself doesn't have any value. How do you apply for a business model? Just I'm just giving an example for Mauritius. We have a lot of these um, what's called medical transcription businesses, which use ICT as a platform to deliver some services. Offshore businesses. So these are using ICT. So if you can come with these ICT enable services, how are you looking at HR recruitment, financial, if you're like uh, helping some companies abroad? filling up the forms and then doing the financial documents. So these are high value added. There was a study done some years back where they say call centers is the low end in terms of value addition. The high end is the HR, human resource, recruitment, financial, and this is happening now in Mauritius. So I just want to share this idea. So if those who have a business idea, don't feel shy. You can come to us, we'll discuss, and we'll say if you have multiple ideas also, we'll try to say focus on one which you can do best. Because the, the world is a global village and you have to compete globally. It's not like you have to compete locally. There could be a company that will come in and compete with you and kill you on the spot. So you have to see where is the focus idea. Because we had a couple of people coming saying we have multiple ideas. Even the board said you need to focus. So we need you guys really to focus. And six to nine months is short. It's not long. Because working on a day-to-day -day basis, developing your business idea, getting network, get, get registration with ISA, all these take time. So you need really to focus. Multiple ideas, I would encourage you at this point for this project. You can do it on your own, but for the IPTICA program, you have to really focus. Thank you very much, Mr. Yeah. Roshan. I'll say it back here. Okay, uh, in response to uh, Masoud Zazri's uh, question, our core competencies include the infrastructure facilities we provide to uh, the incubators, the startup companies uh, recruited at Ibtikar. Uh, the second one is our team who understand what incubation is, um, uh, how they can help uh, companies grow big. Uh, and um, their overall, uh, overall uh, all understanding of the local and international. Entrepreneurial uh, environment um, and uh, in, uh, uh, the, uh, the, the way they're managing uh, IPTIGAR. So they're, they're working very closely with the startup companies, not only um, about their improving the, 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 their business management uh, skills, uh, their capacities, uh, but they're also working on the management of IPTIGAR itself uh, uh, to, to, to transform it into a, an institution that could really contribute to developing the technology entrepreneurship in Afghanistan. And then there's our uh, network of mentors. 
Uh, we currently have about uh, 15 mentors identified, but this network is um, uh, increasing. We're uh, recruiting um, uh, more uh, mentors into our programs. They're, they have national and international experience. Most of them uh, are successful CEOs, uh, uh, CEOs of su some successful uh, technology companies who has a vast experience on uh, how to uh, build a startup into a, a successful enterprise. Um, the other core competency is uh, our partners. Uh, the program is uh, managed and led by a technician in Afghanistan, but we also uh, have Minister of Communications in IT as our partner who's, uh, who's the owner of the, the project and it's funded by the World Bank. World Bank is there to support MCIT. Uh, leadership is very committed and they say uh, uh, we'll go to uh, different institutions uh, to, to get uh, projects and contracts and promote the startup companies incubated with us. Uh, and then uh, we have uh, MED Incubator, which is uh, the top Malaysian incubator um, who's partnering with us, um, uh, with Technician in the Boston Pledge, which is run by MIT professors. It's based in uh, Boston, uh, USA. Uh, they have a vast experience uh, in entrepreneurship. And uh, the Founder Institute is there. I'm uh, um, uh, um, a couple director of the Founder Institute, which is a silicon valley based uh, uh, idea stage accelerator in there with an amazing curriculum and a network of 3,000 uh, mentors. Um, the curriculum itself or global network that you can, like World IT and Services Alliance is in a, uh, an association of uh, IT associations in 70 countries. That means you have access, I'm sitting on the board of directors, it means you have access to uh, potential clients in over uh, 70 uh, countries. And which represents about 90% of the global IT industry, uh, uh, its membership. Uh, yeah, and um, uh, that's, I think, uh, uh, some of our core Thank you very much. We'll get uh, another round of three questions. Uh, uh, first, second. Uh, thank you. Uh, the, my question is to Dr. Carr. Team. Uh, and the question is that the vast majority of the students here are all employed. They're studying entrepreneurship, they're studying MBA, but they're employed. And some of them have got brilliant ideas. But as we all know that the unemployment rate in Afghanistan is very high. And it's going to be very risky for them to quit their jobs and to carry on with their ideas and the support that they may receive from Intercor or Startup Afghanistan. So are there any plans right now or in the future that you support those with the ideas and that they are provided all these facilities are on a part-time basis? Uh, or at least they're given the assurance uh, that at least they will be supported for a longer period of time because the job security is important for them, for them because they need to support their families so making a decision of quitting your job and sticking to an idea that you yet don't know how successful it will be in the future. Uh, are there any plans in the future for Miptikar? Or uh, with full understanding that when you're an entrepreneur, you have to give it a full dedication. But given in the context of Afghanistan and the challenges that we face, there are people that they have got ideas, but just because it's too risky for them to, to lose their jobs and to go ahead with that idea. So what are some of the, the plans that Intercar has for now or for in future? Thank you. Thank you. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Rahim. Good evening, everyone. Uh, my question goes to, I'm sorry, Saeed, uh, who said in his speech that uh, those who lack uh, or doesn't have entrepreneurship in their DNA, they will stop somewhere in the middle of the road. So. Based on your statement, do you still encourage uh, those who lack uh, 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 this entrepreneurship in their DNA or they are not born entrepreneurs to, to select this or to go for this uh, adventurous journey? Thank you. Thank you. Good evening to everybody. Uh, just to have the gender balance, my question is from the case. Sorry to forget the name. Yes. Who? Okay. 
Uh, you have worked in two uh, challenging continents in Africa. You are working in Afghanistan at the beginning. You mentioned that you work with Kandahar and uh, in Kabul. Uh, I have a specific question. What are the key challenges for entrepreneurs in Afghanistan? What challenges do you have experienced for the time you work here? And uh, if you share with us, and how you overcome these challenges? And what are the main opportunities for the entrepreneurs based on your analysis and experience in Afghanistan? Thank you. Thank you very much. I know. Entrepreneurs who love to talk so much. <laughs> but this is very important. We are running out of time and we are trying to uh, combine both the startup and business acquisition together. So please, let's stay focused. Uh, the first question uh, to uh, the Eptekar team, I don't know whoever wants to answer it first, then to answer Recep and then to Ms. Hu. Um, in response to uh, the first question about uh, the job security and what Eptekar uh, presents, uh, I'd say uh, entrepreneurship is, is about risk taking. If you're not a risk taker, it's going to be really difficult for you to. Uh, when I started uh, working on technician, and before uh, becoming a business entrepreneur, I was a social entrepreneur. I really loved establishing uh, networks, groups, and associations. Um, I co-founded the Afghan Computer Science Association in 1999 when I was a university student and then uh, worked with the national, uh, establishing the National ISP Association of Afghanistan and then the National ICT Alliance of Afghanistan in 2007. But later on, I went to politics in 2009 with a prominent politician who's uh, luckily uh, elected as president of Afghanistan for a couple of years as a volunteer, and uh, I was so much cast off, uh, like 20,000 US dollars, right? And I came back, but one thing I learned there was that uh, politics without money doesn't work. And in order for you to get some money, you have to start a business, you know? That's probably the need entrepreneur, as uh, Roshan has explained. But I was so much into the opportunities to see it. Uh, so uh, it was really difficult for me, and if I get a job, that will be a few thousand dollars salary, and uh, 20,000 is a lot of money for, in, for you to pay back. I started with Technation, and Alhamdulillah, uh, today uh, I'm running a few projects and helping other entrepreneurs to, to, to uh, start their own businesses, right? Um, in this period, I went uh, through a lot of difficult time, you know, uh, even I had trouble with my family and my relatives, you know, so much into work, when I was cast out, you know, and then uh, when I was uh, well, trying to establish and grow uh, technician, it was a really difficult time. And uh, in, in one or two years, uh, and uh, Peter before it's been a strong. And uh, now people call me Kaka, you know, in their five years younger than me. So these are some of the risks, you know. If you don't take the risk, it's going to be difficult. What if they are uh, trying to uh, help, or, uh, as I said, uh, mentioned in my uh, presentation, we're really, I mean, uh, I didn't have a mentor when I started with the, the uh, technician. Uh, uh, there was no uh, incubator at the time. So incubators are for the same reason. Uh, Founder Institute, for example, is a good idea stage accelerator. You can join and uh, you don't need to quit your day, uh, day job. They have one class uh, on Thursdays, evening, starting at 5 o'clock and it runs until uh, 8, 9 in the evening. And But you will have like a work of 20 hours that you will uh, need to do at your home. Um, that's one option in a, a, a car. We are looking for a team of four people. Two of them should be full time, and the others can be part timers who work in somewhere and uh, uh, coming uh, late and late and, uh, to, to help. Uh, and the second question was about the uh, DNA. <laughs> That's an interesting question. <laughs> I don't know how to respond to that, but uh, you know, leadership and entrepreneurship, these are. Uh, two topics, you know, sometimes people say whether well, leaders are born or made, you know, so that's the same kind of a question. And I believe uh, there is some leadership inside every person, you know, 
and the same goes with entrepreneurship. But you would need to test it, like if you're going to be seeing how your DNA is, like you go to a lab, right? Uh, for checking your entrepreneurship DNA, there are certain tests. One of them is the Founder Institute uh, test. When you uh, take admission at the Founder Institute, they will give you a, a, an application uh, form. Uh, and the test doesn't ask you about uh, 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 how much do you know about marketing or what is business um, and stuff like that. They will give you an IQ uh, sort of uh, boxes, different boxes, you know, and they're testing your personality. That's called admissions uh, predictive test. I think if we can have that for other incubators, that'll be great. It, it tells them how open you are, how, uh, how's your fluid intelligence, uh, how troublesome you are in a lot of different things, right? And based on that, the Founder Institute decides whether they should be taking the applicant or uh, uh, refusing it. Uh, so uh, there are certain tests we go. No, uh, right. no genetic engineering? <laughs> no genetic engineering. <laughs> Thank you very much, Mr. Roshan. Uh, uh, by the way, this is not my legal last name, for those of you who giggle at my last name. Uh, so, to answer that question, I guess, one question is, I actually want to add on a note about the entrepreneurial DNA is what I think is, um, I think right now the tests that are being done to test the entrepreneurial DNA is very Western biased, me meaning that if you're not, if you're not educated in the West, you, you, do, you don't have a Western education, or if you never spend any time there, it's a little bit, I don't think it tells the whole story, especially for a country like Afghanistan, where a lot of people are entrepreneurs by necessity, and they don't take that into consideration. I mean, this is the reason why in Silicon Valley right now, you see that most of the successful entrepreneurs are white, you know, young males who come from wealthy families because they know that if they fail, their fam they can just go back to their parents' house and live in their basement until they can find a job. Um, and so I do think, you know, there is such thing as an entrepreneurial DNA. I just don't think there is a right test for it out there because most of it has been developed by Americans. Um, and then going back to the question about my experience in Afghanistan. Um, so, Kandahar was very different, right? I was there in August, it was really hot, had to wear a burqa. I was really annoyed because uh, it was really hot, right? And I was walking around doing field visits and, I, and we were working with, with, uh, with citizen journalists um, who are sort of paranoid by nature, which is because they're journalists, that's, you know, that's what they do. And so um, my biggest challenge is here probably is, I mean, I don't speak the language um, and that's really difficult. And thankfully, you know, I speak English, which is the universal language, but I imagine that for a lot of people to, who are trying to do business, in other countries, if you don't know English, if you don't know the local language, it's really hard. Second is, I, and I have to say this, is as a woman, so there are two really, there are two, there, so I get two different um, reactions, right? The first is, oh, you're a woman, please come join us because we have to fulfill the women quota. And I was like, well, I don't really want to be at an event or be in a room in a meeting with someone just because they need to fulfill the quota. Because merit-wise, I should be as good as the guy who's sitting right next to me, right? And I think it's slightly more insulting for me because given what I've done so far, I am at an equal level, accomplishment-wise, than the guy. But the minute I walk into a room, everyone automatically thinks, you know, and we, and America has this problem with African-Americans as well. It's like, you know, they walk in the room and go, oh, they only got it because of the quota, right? And then you have to prove them wrong. Um, and so that takes a much longer, it's just a much longer struggle. The second is, um, and this is kind of funny, is um, in Afghanistan, especially in the Middle East too, um, they always ask me, the first qu question they ask me is not who my name is, but where are you from? And I say America, because, you know, I was, you know, raised and born there, and they're like, no, 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 like, where are you from? And I was like, does this really matter? And then, um, and then so now, 
whenever I'm giving you know presentations here or elsewhere, I just say it straight out. Like my parents are from here. Don't ask me, please. Um, and I think it's you know it's very common here, but in the states, it's actually a very offensive question to ask someone. Um, and then it's also as a woman, you know, it's always. I'm sure you guys know this, but it's like, oh, I have a son who's not married. Would you like to, you know? And it's it's setting me up on a date with the, themselves for their sons. <laughs> Thankfully, it hasn't happened on this trip yet. <laughs> um, but yeah, so and you know, it's 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 funny story to tell. But I think after getting it over and over and over from people, there does become a point where you just think, I really do not want to be a female, right? And as a foreigner, even I, I get much better treat treated than a lot of the local females. And so. You know, I do applaud a lot of the local women who are trying to start their own businesses and who are, you know, really going for it. Thank you very much. Um, it will be a privilege to be able to have you back in a uh, Ms. Roshan uh, and Ms. Hu. Um, I just heard that you're leaving for some time and then hopefully whenever you're back to help us uh, uh, come up with a collaboration between the university and uh, I know uh, somehow, on, uh, I think it's the first time that I'm hearing this talk about Monson. I uh, started working in Monson. I, uh, I know about this sort of other countries and uh, yes, such as Louis. And it will be a pleasure to have you again in, in the university. Uh, we have uh, an appreciation letter for all of you. I would like to present them to you. Uh, we'll start uh, in um, with. Uh, the decision letters, and then we will have a very brief uh, presentation on how the AIB Bank has acquired the uh, Islamic Charter. The first uh, decision letter is for Mr. Omar Mansour and Sorry himself. Exist already with somebody else. 
from, starting from scratch, you will be building everything on your own. You will have your, uh, you will notice your customer behaviors one by one. Uh, you will uh, sort out your any issue with you or frictions which you will have in your processes for your customers which you acquire. So acquiring uh, a business is you have to adjust yourself. You have to comfort your customers uh, which you acquire or the business you take over from an organization. Uh, at AIB, uh, we did the uh, business acquisition of Stan uh, Standard Charter Bank to AIB in three stages. However, if we divide it into uh, smaller stages, you will have a huge uh, lengthy list of what stages you have to be uh, taken. Uh, to be taken care. We have a pre-acquisition uh, phase, uh, during acquisition phase, and post-acquisition. Uh, you'll see some words put around and not maybe very clear on there. We will just talk about those words, what they mean, how you have to take care of it, and what AID has done to make it a success. It has been a, uh, a very first time practice in Afghanistan, especially in banking sector. Uh, and for AIB, where we had a limited number of resources uh, and acquiring an international bank business in Afghanistan, which is something you have to think very carefully about it. You have to take your steps very carefully and you have to be made aware of everything you have to have. Uh, the word communication, I've put it uh, more than once on this uh, word list which we think is a very key uh, word in terms of business acquisition. If you do not communicate properly, if you're not understood, or if you are understand something different than what the other partner is providing to you, you'll make a big mistake, and that mistake you will only notice at the end of the project when you cannot uh, run or take it over or, or put it to the, others, uh, to the next step, stage. In the pre-acquisition phase, at AIB, uh, the major part of work we did was at the pre-acquisition stage. Uh, there are too many uh, details if you go through all of them, but uh, in just main points, uh, I've put communication, organization structure, IT formats, business groups, organization culture, and legal aspects. Legal, uh, this is not in an order which you will think that these are the steps you have to take through. These are in a uh, un, kind of scrambled order that you have to think which one comes first. Do we run all of them parallel or these serially uh, one after the other? How does it happen? Uh, the legal aspects which has come to, uh, in the last uh, in my presentation, that's a point which you have to take care of from the beginning to the end, during acquisition, and even after the acquisition. You have to be extremely careful on how you deal with the customers. You have to have consensus of your customers, which you acquire. They have to agree on your terms and condition. You have to agree on their, uh, the culture they are used to. Communication, understandability. You have to be understandable. You have to be clear. Everything should be in writing. If you go through such a, uh, such a business acquisition, or however, Standard Charter Bank was just a branch, but that was a bank. It had a CEO. It was the representative of uh, Standard Charter Bank in Afghanistan. And the number of documents you can, how many documents you have to prepare, you have to agree on, you have to go through, and how far in detail, you have to be very careful with the wording what kind of wording you put. Sometimes you think something, you write it, but if somebody else reads the same wording, it will not capture the same understanding that you have. So you have to be uh, very uh, kind of uh, exact on, on what you'd like to describe. Talk to the right people at the right time. Sometimes you will be put through uh, to have a point of contact, discuss, uh, communicate, and go through everything. But at the point of time, you'll find out that you have been talking to someone who has not been the right person. 
You have to find the right people, have them everybody. Whenever you spray on something, just find those people involved, spray them all with the information and collect the same information from them to make sure you are on the right path. Organization structure. Uh, there are always differences in the organization structure. AIB, SCB. SCB has a different setup. AIB has a different setup. Different skills, different position titles even. Different approaches to customers. So those all has to be uh, educated very properly and to be understood how they have been dealing. So you have to learn that culture. You have to mix it with your organization culture and kind of marrying them both and bringing it over back to the, to the market. IT formats, this is a challenging uh, point, in, uh, especially in big businesses. Even with, when you're dealing with financial institutions, every number which you copy or you take over should be exactly the same. The customer should not uh, feel a difference between what they were taking and they, what they are getting at the moment. Uh, communication in the IT can mostly go wrong. You will always think that you have the right format which will communicate, but uh, even after testing, but when you go live, you will find out that something goes wrong. So that has to happen very uh, appropriately. Business groups, whenever you acquire, what we did in AIB, there was a, a portfolio of customers available in Standard Charter Bank. Uh, what we did, we educated what kind of customers they have, which sectors they have, how many of these customers are profitable, how many are non-profitable, what kind of agreements they have signed. Uh, big customers, how many big customers they have, how many small do they have. Do they have a loan portfolio? Do they have a credit portfolio? Or it's only deposits? Uh, assets versus liabilities. You all know these words. Uh, organization culture. There's also a different culture in the organization. Uh, the staff uh, in an organization with themselves, they have different cultures, they have different attitudes, setups, which is filtering from the top down to the bottom in an organization. Same was with Standard Chartered Bank and AIB. We have different cultures. We identified the differences, we identified the similarities, we worked them out and uh, we were able to provide a proper outcome uh, for the, to the bank. We had the legal aspects. Uh, before I'm out of time, I will just go through the uh, other slides, then we'll have the questions at the end anyway. During acquisition. So, pre-acquisition uh, phase was kind of doing your homework very properly, and whenever you go to class, being able to answer everything which is available. All hands should be on job. Teamwork. We had a very strong team, however, we had a limited number of resources, but a strong team, committed and uh, honest. This is a very uh, important point. A team in an organization works like the engine of the, uh, uh, if you think a car. If one part does not function properly at the right time, you will miss something, where you cannot uh, move ahead. Uh, again, I've put the communication here at first, because we feel communication is the key of success. You have to be able uh, to find out every happening during the uh, uh, acquisition uh, or the transfer. <coughs> <during the acquisition. coughs> Availability is another key. Whenever you implement something, you have to have the proper people available. You have to make them available to answer the questions when arise uh, during the uh, uh, acquisition or the takeover and you have to be able to uh, filter everything properly. Physical takeover. Not only the business was taken over by AIB. AIB took over the uh, space, which was uh, with Standard Charter Bank, the branch. We took over their staff. We took over their equipment. Everything was a uh, whole deal, kind of whole acquisition. Not in parts. However, we had uh, there were some other cases where AIB wanted to participate, but uh, 
when we looked at what kind of portfolio is available to be purchased, we did not show interest in that because there were good and bad uh, businesses available inside where AIB uh, took a step uh, backwards. Uh, especially taking over staff uh, is very sensitive uh, when even you introduce the same staff to the customers, being their point of contact, knowing their uh, uh, attitudes, their business, their relationship. And you have to keep the same staff happy at the level they were. You have to offer the same, uh, not, uh, not less but more. Post acquisition, uh, once you have acquired the business, your job is not done. You still have to do a lot of work to keep uh, whatever you have got, to keep it properly, to maintain it, uh, to go ahead with it, where, where again comes communication first. Uh, maintaining the relationship with your customers. You have to be able to, uh, what we did, uh, we visited each and every customer of Standard Chartered Bank one by one in their offices. We uh, presented our products, we presented our uh, changes, the differences, we gave them more opportunities uh, than they had with Standard Chartered Bank, uh, and we tried to convince them and keep them. There's no mean, if you, if you acquire a business, the customers will come with you, but uh, later on in the, in the time, one by one, they will move back to uh, different businesses if you do, they don't want you. For example, in, in terms of bank, our customers have 17 choices. You have to be able to keep the same customer, and we have been succeeded in that. The voice of customers, how you are going to uh, collect feedback from your customers, what, what are the gaps in your process, what are the differences customers notice which you do not notice, how you go behind it, how you find it out. These are all uh, important uh, for the after acquisition. Maintaining relationships, uh, a wider network. AIB gave the customers a wider network than they had. They had only one choice, one uh, branch in uh, Wazir Akbar Khan. Uh, they had two ATM machines and one ATM machine in uh, UN Kampan. Where AIB, immediately we opened uh, a branch inside the UN Kampan because UN was their customer. We gave them two ATMs there. We gave them a lot of opportunities, different facilities uh, to just ha keep the customers with ourselves. Uh, this was it, uh, about the uh, after acquisition. Uh, thank you very much for your, atten for your attention. Uh, if you have questions, I'll be here. Okay, actually my question was that uh, AIB has been purchased or uh, the acquisition has been taken over by, uh, the SBS has been taken over by AIB. Then I said, why there is uh, no marketing? Because it, it was the first time that we hear this. It is the weakest of uh, marketing, or there is uh, only uh, marketing by TV that we didn't see. And second thing that you mentioned, uh, the merge. Uh, is it really merge of the uh, SCB uh, with AIB? Because uh, we cannot uh, that we call merge because that was a, a, a brand shop or brand uh, or uh, it was a it was a one uh, or it was a brand of a standard charter bank in Afghanistan. Then why we call it merge to AIB uh, We have two questions. Uh, question number one was why you are not aware of this merger or this uh, business acquisition in Afghanistan which has taken place by AIB. Uh, we had some uh, announcements. Uh, there were advertisements. We were on BBC. There are still, uh, you can find articles on internet if you search about it. Uh, AIB was the only bank uh, which could take over the business of Standard Charter Bank in Afghanistan. So, uh, it was done, uh, every step was taken care. Maybe the advertisement uh, was not that much to keep everybody aware of what of the happening, but uh, AIB customers, uh, they were aware because this was available in every branch of AIB, and uh, 
you could find. If you've seen, if you may have noticed AI based advertisement, which uh, is not actually marketing in advance, so it's advertising, uh, is not that many, not that much on TV. There are different factors. Uh, people who are looking for quality, they will find the quality. Uh, and you will market or you will advertise more when you really are in need of business. <coughs> and when you are not in need of business, you will just better say that in this situation to uh, uh, spend it somewhere else. And your second question was, uh, why the merger happened? Yeah. Yeah. It was not, okay, it was, uh, it was a merger or kind of uh, not acquisition. Uh, if you can read it here, Standard Chartered Bank, they transfer their operations to AIB. The customers they have, they, are, they were not only their customers in Afghanistan. Those customers are banking with Standard Chartered Bank worldwide. Like, the majority of them are the NGOs, big international companies, embassies, uh, like World, uh, yeah, World Bank, embassies, UN, which are big customers. And for the sake of keeping those customers happy, which are not only banking with, uh, with them in Afghanistan, we acquired the business, we got the consent of their customers, and we took over the operation the way Standard Charter Bank was doing. You have a question? Uh, um, so, one of the reasons which is still unknowing that uh, a standard charter bank being one of the credible banks uh, in Afghanistan, uh, different reason has been published in different media. Uh, the exact uh, reason is still it's unknowing for us being one of the customers of standard charter bank that why they have left Afghanistan, what has happened to the standard charter bank. That's a question that Standard Chartered Bank can answer, not AIB. But we are aware that it was a security situation which made them leave Afghanistan and nothing else. So if you want a specific answer, you can approach Standard Chartered Bank. My question is, my question is, the first question is that, does AIB Bank still have all the customers from Standard Chartered? And the second question, how long does the process Take AIB to acquire actual establishment. Okay. Uh, uh, the first question answer is yes. Uh, AIB and Standard Chartered Bank has a very long term partnership agreement. Not only the uh, customers which we acquire, they even refer international customers still to AIB to bank with us and uh, And the second question uh, which you answered about the timelines. You would have noticed that I put a very uh, kind of uh, uh, not visible in my presentation. There's a Gantt chart at the left side, which shows the timeline. Through all this uh, period, you have to have a Gantt chart, uh, a timeline. It took us around one year uh, to get the task completed. Okay, final question. Uh, you, you mentioned mostly the process that you have applied to get a business done. But the financial implication and capital investment from your side didn't mention like those aspects of your uh, uh, position. Mm -hmm. uh, in every acquisition, there is a capital and, and investment. Uh, you can find more details on our uh, balance sheet, which is publicly available on internet. So you can see the amount of business AIB has acquired that's clearly mentioned there. So just to take time, I can return it there. Thank you very much, everybody. Uh, once again, uh, we have a very uh, small piece of appreciation for Mr. Mir. Thank you very much for sharing your inputs and ideas on building position. Uh, I hope you will be able to have you again on campus.